All right, David Harry here, and recently I done a very long video which was about using the M4 Mac Mini workstation by a Casus with an M4 Mac Mini and also two SSDs. And I done a load of different types of speed testing and RAID setups and stuff like that. However, that video did have a section in it which was just about how to install the SSDs into the actual enclosure. Now I thought to myself, do you know what? Nobody's gonna go watching like, you know, a 40, 50 minute video just for that one section if they didn't know that it was in there. So what I'm gonna do for this video is just to take out that bit of the video which shows how to use the thermal pads properly and how, how to also connect the SSDs into the enclosure. Now, if you've already seen that previous video, don't bother watching this one because all that your everything that you're gonna see from this point on is all from the other video. Okay, so the first thing that I will do is is to show you how we use these thermal pads because it may not be super obvious immediately and the other thing as well here this pad has already been used so it does look a little bit grotty however you know I've had to put like the cellophane layer back on it just so I could show you how to do this so anyway on one side we have a cellophane protective layer so if I just pull it off here we should be able to see so there we go there's the cellophane layer that we have to pull off now i'm going to leave this on just for now but when i actually do the ssd installation i will pull it off but i'm showing you it here just so you can see exactly what's going on now on this side here see this actual like surface although it looks like it's got something that you would pull off it it doesn't so this side here it's like a it feels like almost like a thick paper or something whatever you do do not try to remove that it does not come off or you'll end up doing what i done which is basically just completely wreck the actual thermal pad there anyway so like i say i'm just showing you this straight away because it may not be super obvious when i do the close-ups now as i install the ssds now the first thing that we need to do is to remove this cover from the ssd compartment and to do that there's a single screw down here and the actual enclosure does come with the correct screwdriver as well so what we need to do is just get that screwdriver and then just untighten that screw that holds in the cover for the enclosure part there and then that will just simply come off like that so now the next thing to do is to connect the ssds now if you only plan on using one ssd you can use either of the m.2 sockets here it doesn't matter which one you use if you're only going to use one ssd now to insert the ssd as we're going to see here the ssd has a notch or a cutout on it here and then hopefully we can get to see something here but on the m.2 socket here they actually have a guide pin on them which basically means that you can only put the ssd in one way round, so you can't get it in the wrong way around so what i'm going to do is just to pop that ssd in there now just give it a bit of a push until you like you can't push it any further don't push it too much but you know you just put a little bit of force on and then that will connect itself into the m.2 slot now at this point here we should be able to see the ssd holds itself into place and almost goes like a bit springy and that will just indicate that the ssd is connected now the next thing to do is to use one of these rubber standoffs that comes with the enclosure and this is used to fasten down the ssd to the inside of the compartment here now there's actually two of these but you obviously only need to use one pair ssd and basically what it is it's got a groove on it which you just slide over that end there on the ssd so it kind of fits perfectly onto that half cut out on the ssd and then just under it here in fact we can see it there there's a hole there in the enclosure so what happens is we push that down and then that rubber stopper will connect into the hole and fasten down the ssd and then what we need to do is to connect two of these thermal pads to the ssd and as it's shown you just before we just pull off the one side which has got this like you know cellophane layer on it and then that side where we've just pulled it off from we put that down onto the ssd so let me just do that and then we just apply the second thermal pad on top of the first thermal pad once again we just pull off that protective cellophane layer off the second pad and then put that down on the side that we've just taken off onto 
the face thermal pad and then that is one of the SSDs installed with its thermal pads. Now of course at this point if you're just using one SSD then you can just then go and put the cover back on the enclosure. However if you are going to use two SSDs then just do the exact same procedure with the second SSD until you've got your two SSDs fully installed with their thermal pads. And then to complete the installation we just need to put the cover back on over the SSD compartments. Now this cover will only go on one way and we've got like a little slight notch at the top here and that fits into a little cutout at the top there. So like I say, only go in one way. And then what we need to do is to just screw down that screw back on to fasten it on. Now I do have to mention here, this can be a little bit fiddly but just bear with it and then, oh actually that's gone on first time so that wasn't so fiddly for me. However, it can be a little bit fiddly but just take your time and bear with it tighten it back on and now that is all complete now just a quick bit of advice here although the dock will actually power up using the power of the thunderbolt port from the m4 mac mini that we connect it to as in we get that short cable that comes with the dock we just connect it to any one of the three thunderbolt ports on the back there and then we connect that to the port here that says host on the dock now, like I say, technically speaking, that will all work as far as the power is concerned. However, if you're using two SSDs and maybe those SSDs are like a little bit power hungry and also you may be plugging other things into the dock, you may run out of power and you may like kind of like underperform with some of the stuff such as the SSDs or you could possibly even get disconnects because of a lack of power. Well, my recommendation is to use the actual power supply that comes with the enclosure and what you do you just use that power supply with the supplied C cable that comes with it and then we just connect that to the socket here that says PD so we're just adding extra power now to the actual dock or the enclosure system and so with the addition of this 30 watt power supply we definitely won't run into any powering issues with either two SSDs or the combination of the SSDs and whatever else might be drawing power from the actual enclosure itself. And then finally, to activate the enclosure, it does have its own power button, which makes the enclosure independent from the M4 Mac Mini that's inside of it. So no matter how you are powering it, whether it's just only with the M4 Mac Mini's power via Thunderbolt or you add the extra power supply, you have to click on the power button to activate the enclosure and therefore activate the SSDs as well. Now you can click and power that on before you even boot up the Mac if you're using the external power supply or you can kind of switch it off and on whilst the Mac is on. However, if you are going to switch this off whilst the Mac is on, make sure to eject the discs first. So what you don't want to be doing is just switching it off whilst the Mac is on without ejecting the discs. Okay, so there we have it then, how to connect SSDs and to correctly attach the thermal pads to the M4 Mac Mini Workstation by a Cases. Now there's going to be a whole bunch of links to everything used in the video in the video description below. If you've liked the video, please do give it a thumbs up. A sub to the channel would be absolutely awesome. I'm David Harry. Thank you very much for watching this video. Take care and goodbye now.